The world is coming apart at the seams. And we are here with the news to share with you strange and unusual supernatural tales from all around the world. Because we are the only news you need to know. I'm Dave Schrader, and this is the Paranormal 60 News. Hello, good evening, my little darklings, and welcome to this All Souls Day edition of the Paranormal 60 News. I am your host and anchor on this lovely program, Dave Schrader. And tonight, tonight we have many things to discuss, and we are introducing you to a new member of our correspondent team. That's right, we are expanding our boundaries. We've heard you. You've said it's time you show some diversity, Dave. It's time that you stretch out of your comfort zone. So we're doing that. We are bringing in a brand new member. But first, ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce to you my right-hand man and to most of the people in the chat room, the real star of the show, Chachi. <laughs> the hey right there. Hey, Jeff. I usually get to go last. I know. No, you're usually right-hand man right there. But ladies and gentlemen, the colonel still working for FEMA. So the next man in line to take over the kingdom Succession of planning? Yes. Is the paranormal detective Greg Lawson, who's also Hello. here. Hello, Greg. Hello, old buddy. How are you? I'm doing very well. I have yeah. uh, have a drink ready and uh, mm -hmm. looking up to get my stories, and I'm good. Good. Uh, excellent. I like that you're just now getting prepared. Perfect. That's all we need. We have a special guest joining us a little later on in the program who's here to join us and go over a brand new movie review. But first, it's time, as I said, let's get diversity on the show. We need to bring something a little different to this show. And we've had many shades of facial colors from jaundiced Marty to... <laughs> Plum headed Greg and oh, I don't know. Right. 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 Avocado Dave. And then there's you just that light looks good on you, Chach. I don't know. It looks like you're almost using a filter. Are you using a filter? He's using a filter. Look at him. Mm. You like that? Well, to add to the diversity of our yes. program, I decided it was about time we bring somebody with an entire brain cell in. So here is mm -hmm. your diversity, ladies and gentlemen, from Into the Obscure Podcast, now part of the Paranormal 60 news what? crew for what? the foreseeable future. Tressa Slater. Hi, Tressa. What? Jeez. You brought a professional Hi. into this? Uh-huh. No, um, no, yes. no nerves. She's also a comedian, so she's bound to be funnier than any of the three of us put together. Fingers crossed. Yeah, this is exciting. Welcome to the fold, Tressa. Thanks for joining us here. Thank you for having me. Uh, mm -hmm. I was promised that I would not be third in the uh, restriction to get into the fold of hierarchy here. And I don't know why Greg is above me right now. And I'm a little bit upset mm. about that. Well, I said mm. as of now, meaning, you know, because. What about now? Now you're what in. What about now? Thank you're, you. Now you're second. Yeah. Let's, you. uh, let's get started the right way. I did tell Tressa that if she's coming, she had to mm. bring a drink along. So what have you got there, uh, Chachi? What is your drink of choice for tonight? Well, now that we have turned the calendar to November. Uh -huh. Is a Shiner Holiday Cheer. Oh, fun! Yes. So, what is that? A beer? Is it a champagne of beers? Is it a? It is, it is a, an a ale brewed with peaches and pecans. Oh, very! You're dipping into the Greg Lawson uh, drink book of fruity fun. <laughs> well, yeah, I prefer to have my bourbon or scotch, but uh, this is all I had available. All right. Oh, really? Yeah. So from the hotel concierge, that's all. They <laughs> <laughs> you weren't going in big ball and telling them you're part of the Paranormal 60 News crew? And they gave me a six-pack for $10. Oh, uh -huh. That's not not too shabby. Greg, what have you brought to drink with us this evening? Oh, I think I'm going to polish off this uh, Buffalo Trace. Oh, that's right. Oh, Hashtag oh, jealous. <laughs> going to be in control. Tressa, what drink have you brought to well, share? Well, I stopped by the 7-Eleven and I got a bottle of Barefoot Wine. Nice. Wow. You did what? bring it. Yeah, 7-Eleven. Mm -hmm. Did you get any of that fancy 
cheese in a can that you've shared with me before? Of course I did. Are you kidding me? Yes. Chris is like, who needs crackers? Open up your mouth, Schrader. Thank you. <laughs> I have got something. This was gifted to me. I just came back from the haunted Shanley Hotel in Napanock, New York. Amazing time. If you have not gone, please go. But stay tuned because medium scotty and i will be returning i believe in april and we'll have some updated information on that but it's well worth visiting melinda freeman came she brought winnie a giant bottle of fireball which no. sadly didn't make the trip i don't know what happened oh, no. melinda. those airlines oh, gone. yeah there i think it was stolen right out of the bag yeah but she brought something for me and i was excited because of the name on this bottle it is a Faston Maple Imperial Stout, aged in Mad River Distillers rum barrels. It is Lawson's finest liquors. Can you see Lawson's? That? Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. Lawson's. Oh, that sounds liquor. delicious. Have you tried it yet? I have no. The whole Anything idea is Lawson's to bring it on air. Right, and then I love that uh, the back of it says. Um, Brewed by Lawson's finest liquids. Nowhere on here does it say beer or anything. It just says oh, stout and say. liquid. No, that's what we say. Liquid. Is that what the family calls it? Just liquid? Yeah. Yeah, Is I there am. alcohol in it, actually? Greg, get your paw some liquid. Is that what? Uh, is that how it went down? <laughs> yeah, Ooh, he was nice great, dark. man. Look at how dark then he made the turkey pot pie. He'd take me out that shooting. He'd go, run, boy. Run. He was great. That. that is dark. Holy smokes. Mm, it's got a nice. That's uh, what they earthy, say about. It. It's yeah. got a nice earthy head to it. It's a. Uh, it's a good. Let me. I'm gonna give it a shot. My first shot here. I'm <laughs> telling you, coming it. off of the old uh, uh, Affy Tapple beer was a bad experience. Oh God. Here we go. Greg's face and Tress's shirt. They do match. That's why we had to put them on separate screens. Let's see. Oh, I love do it. it. Oh, come on, Dave. Come on. Turn that thing up. Mm. I want. I want to see your. Um, <laughs> I, I really like it. It's, Come on, it's man. delicious. Bring back the peanut butter like whiskey. Very good. I got to save it because I've seen your guys' stories tonight, and I have a feeling we're going to need a drink. Um, speaking of needing a drink, I called out to you, my lovely legion of darklings around the world, and I said, this is October, and I need you to go out and rate and review this show wherever you listen to it, on any podcast device, especially Apple Podcasts. And six of you responded, thank you <laughs> wow. so much. My favorite. Oh, that's so nice. I said it's real simple. Just give five stars. It's even written in the show guide. Five stars. Say something a little nice. Somebody did not follow the, the directions. Let's look at this. I'm a little confused by this. Maybe you guys can help me. Okay. Iggy Dog says, <laughs> what happened? After the split from Darkness Radio, the show started off great. But since then, it's in full decline. See? The weekly paranormal news show is hit or miss with two hosts missing. Honestly, I don't think there's been a show for two weeks. Next, let's talk about stuffing your channel with other podcasters' content because that's what happens here. Currently, there are at least two other co content providers that Dave puts on. And when there is a show with an interview, Dave always does a great job, but it's just not consistent. I have mm -hmm. not missed a week since I began Every week, there is two episodes. There's the, the Monday night episode and the Wednesday night episode. So I'm not sure what they're missing. And I, I even cleverly named the episode The Paranormal 60, so you know which one is me on that list, oh, wow. Iggy Dog. Yeah, Iggy Dog, bro. I feel like I'm getting called out right now. Like, uh, oh, Tressa you got a problem Slater. with me? I did, run a little, uh, I did run a little scan on this, and Iggy Dog also happens to be T Slater 312. <laughs> 372. <laughs> yeah. It's uh I don't know. Any I, I, a neighbor, I, maybe riding in on your I, internet? Yeah, I have a lot of enemies. So <laughs> a lot of enemies. That was good. Thank you, Donna C. Thank yeah. you. What is Iggy Dog smoking? And uh, I do want to thank everybody uh for the lovely donations. Our super chat, super sticker, super likes are all on. Feel free to throw some cash our way, and I will definitely use it for my needs and ill-gotten gains. Uh, you can also throw some money at the uh, Venmo at paranormal60.com. But why don't we give you some content so that you feel like you're getting hey. something <laughs> in return? Let's try this. Yeah. And, and in when two weeks, we had a show, Dave. Yeah, I know. There's, uh, I want, you know, when it, when we're coming out swinging, I got to have my, my guy. I got to have my man, G-Law, jump in here. Ooh, that's a good nickname, G-Law. Hey, buddy. 
Yeah, yeah. that's a pretty good one. Hashtag G Law. Uh, G Law, you've got a story for us, and this oh, is. Oh, hey. Yeah, this is. Oh, do you oh, have? I didn't know that's where we're going. Hand? I didn't know that Did you print one out? Yeah. 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 They used to call me Laws Man. Laws mm. Man. Let's just yeah. stick with G Law. G yeah. G Law. All right. Yeah. So uh, let's go. Hey. Yeah. Let's go someplace. Let's take a little trip. Okay. okay. Let's, go to, let's go to Ecuador. Oh. Ecuador. There. Schoolgirls mysteriously collapse after using the devil's board, also known as Ouija board. It didn't wow. say that. I just threw that in there. Really hard um, to tell. 20 schoolgirls from St. Francis of Assisi Education Center in Shushu. Assisi, not Assisi. And St. Francis. Dude, I was, I was for calling him Assisi, I think. Excuse me. I was uh, baptized there, so uh, carry on. Oh, that makes sense. Um, at Go. that place in Ecuador. Mm -hmm. reportedly collapsed using a Ouija board during school. The mysterious event occurred on Monday, October 30th, and has left local communities confused and frightened. Mm -hmm. Dave. It's confused like me after my first sexual encounter, confused and frightened. It, according to eyewitnesses. And a daddy. <laughs> that's a fact, Jack. According to eyewitnesses, the episode yes. began during a physical education class when several students fainted rising concerns amongst or raising concerns amongst teachers and classmates mm. within minutes the unsettling scene escalated and more students in different classrooms and <laughs> corridors also fell unconscious local authorities said emergency services were called to the school to address the bizarre situation yep just like those kids yeah, is this an actual photo of that? It's, I believe it is. Those look like Ecuadorian children. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. The background, especially. <laughs> mm -hmm. Local counselor Ortine Velasquez spoke to reporters about the alarming events, saying they uh -huh. were vomiting and doing concerning gestures. Yeah, I think somebody uh, translated it. <laughs> wait, now, wait a minute. Does it detail what a concerning gesture yeah, looks no, like? No, no, it doesn't. But I'm pretty sure that that was lost in translation. I can think of uh, a few. And, it wasn't spoiled food or bad air that affected them. What mysteriously and worrisome is that most of the victims were girls aged between 14 and 16. Kind of similar to, I don't know, the Salem witch trials. Yeah. Oh. Trust us later. See that? Right in between that 14 to 16 year age range. What? That's what? <laughs> what are we talking about? Here? Oh, we're diversifying. You're the brightest one and the youngest, so just take it. Uh, okay. One perplexing turn in the mm -hmm. instant is that uh, raising some eyebrows and the decisions to make some of the affected schoolgirls go to a nearby church. The decision was made following claims that the students have been engaging in Ouija board on the school grounds. There are superstitions that Ouija boards can invite supernatural entities, potentially leading to negative or demonic encounters. Mm. Therefore, School officials and authorities decided to take these girls to the church for treatment, indicating deep-seated fears surrounding the event, Dave. Mm. Yeah, they were, they were serious about uh, tr treating these chicks. Anyway, uh, uh, officials have been quick to rule out environmental factors, food poisoning, and as a cause of the mass fainting. However, mm. the sudden collapse of the students still remain a mystery, and there have been no updates regarding their condition. The incident mm -hmm. in Ecuador is not the first of its kind in Latin America. Back in March, 28 schoolgirls in Colombia were has hospitalized after reportedly using a Ouija board at a school uh, and subsequently losing consciousness. Mm -hmm. Hugo Torres, head of the Haleras yeah, Educational Institute, let's say that's how you say it, uh, where the incident in Colombia is said to take place. Mm -hmm. There were 28 possible cases of anxiety in the school students. The respective parents and guardians were informed Wait a minute. of the century. <laughs> there was anxiety among students? Well, you that know, sounds wrong. Demons what? or anxiety, it's kind of, you know, demonic possession can cause anxiety. I know that that's one of it's the... It's got to uh, be like demonic possession if there's anxiety. No oh, yeah. child has anxiety. None. Yeah. Not today. No. One question that remains unanswered is how the students obtained the Ouija board on school premises and why there were no teachers present to supervise them during the event. This enigma only adds to the intrigue surrounding the Ouija board. 
I will say that I dug deep into the story when you sent it to me, Greg. I'm like, this is fascinating. And maybe I could be the one to find the answer. Maybe this time I could be the paranormal detective. Because how do kids, A, get their hands on a Ouija board in Ecuador? And I thought it was going to be really a hard process. Not as hard as you think. Nope. Oh, okay. <laughs> the Ouija board. Uh, out. Um, yeah. Huh. yeah. And if they forget the planchet, just put a French fry down on there, plop it on. Yeah, uh-huh. The to, grease will uh, like show you where to go. It's fine. Exactly. Well, like how I... many do you think? Just uh, seriously, serious question for those of you listening on my screen. I have a mock-up Ouija board Happy Meal. I'm serious. How many do you think they would sell? Oh my God! If they put that out every Halloween, there would be lines around the building. They would sell out every single time. Every yeah. time. Yeah, do you, would you give like in one box? It'd be like a little jar with a soul. Razor in it. blades. Uh, do, do razor blades. No. What? How do you play the Ouija board, Craig? This is starting to make so much more sense of the it trauma yeah. you've been through. Yeah. I didn't understand what we were talking about, but it makes <laughs> sense to me. It's hard. To That's all that matters. That. Yeah. Uh, everyone, please get Craig's book. It's great. Thank you, Loki. Boy, Thank if you. only we knew what book she was talking about. Is there anything oh. that you have out now, Greg? Oh, oh there's messages from Mothman. I'm glad Loki liked it. Thank is you. it a specific Mothman or kind of is he being generalized? It Was it we many? Know, yeah, people look at uh, the, uh, the messages that they interpret from Mothman, and I kind of relate that to a lot of things. And if you just oh. pay attention to what's going on around you, maybe you'll find that message only meant for you. <laughs> you. If you pay attention to the message, it might just pop right up for you. Is that it? All right. It's good to know. No, thank you very much for the information. Uh, Tressa, real yes. quickly before we, we allow you to, uh, uh, I shouldn't say that, it comes off. Yeah, so weird. Most, uh, yeah, domineering when I say it to you. Uh, <laughs> before you break into your very first news story. Wow. Uh, can you now you are one of the three hosts of into the obscure which can now be heard wednesdays right here on the audio paranormal 60 uh audio channel that's correct tell me uh, what what brings you into the paranormal have you had experiences or are you one of those that hopes to have an experience i didn't know you were gonna ask me questions dude uh yeah (laughs) oh good yeah so we've clarified that you are definitely Somebody that is ha- either had experiences or wants to have it. Oh, yeah, no, I've always been like super into the paranormal. And, you know, when you grow up religious, everything's paranormal because everything's demons and weird and crazy. And I mm-hmm. uh, got a big thrill out of Art Bell and Coast to Coast for forever. Uh, rest in peace. And uh, I saw Mothman once. Uh, anyway. Let's talk about what's in the news. That's a big bomb to drop. You saw Mothman once? Did moving. you see the keep Chicago moving. version of Mothman? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, talking to people, maybe it was a crane. Who knows? I'm going to do but... the Jack Morris uh, Say by the Bell timeout here. There was so many answers to that one question, and none of them seemed sincere at all. Yeah, yeah, no, maybe. No, yeah, definitely, probably. I, I might have. Yeah. I don't know. Nobody knows anything. So well, I just where, know. Where might, if you were out, where might you have seen it? I, on my way to work, which is close to O'Hare. And uh, it was, you know, on its way to O'Hare because that's where they hang out. It looks suspiciously like a helicopter, but we knew better. Mm, no. no. Big winged no. creature? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, would you say it looked like a giant moth or was it more like a giant bat? Mm. I've bat. heard more like it's a giant vampire bat looking thing. It I thought at first it was a skydiver at eight AM, but that made no sense. Ah. So it looked like a giant bat, yeah. And it was just sa- sailing through the air? It was just coasting. Uh above the trees. No one else seemed to notice or care because it was rush hour traffic. It was wild. I d I don't know. Uh, uh Bat Squatch. Squatch. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That's right. I'm here to protect the forests. I'm Bat Squatch. Um, all right. So you you saw Bat Squatch, or you saw a, uh, um, a Mothman um, character. Mm-hmm. You've seen uh, you, ghosts. Have you ever seen or had an encounter with a ghost? I don't think so. Oh. I don't know. And inquiring minds, I'm asking for a friend. Were you drinking while driving by any chance when you saw the Mothman? Listen, we don't need to get into my personal life right now. Right. So if we could Stop just stop by 7-Eleven on the way to work. <laughs> I enjoy a taquito. Okay, that's all I'm going to say. 
<laughs> she takes dumping the tequila straight into the Slurpee on the way into work. I'm sticking I like with Squatch. I like yeah, Pat Squatch. He's out there, and I gotta go to work. All right, Tressa. Uh huh. Yeah. Welcome. Thank you. Time for your very first paranormal <gasps> news story. So exciting. Let's hear it. Do we have a drum roll or anything? Remember, no. No, you put yourself okay. in your grandma's basement. Drum roll, please. Oh, my God. It's really close. Yeah. Hey, I also want to thank you for giving me the longest story on earth. Thank you for that. <laughs> That's not true. Greg, I think, has a two-page story coming up later about no. Goldie Hawn and Kurt Russell. So there you uh, go. Oh, it's a good story, too. Over, I know Greg all has it. trouble reading, so the letters are all this tall. That's why. Oh, I'm, my God. Oh, yeah. Same. Same. Yeah. So oh, let's hit it. Go. All right. Well, this woman, let's go into it. When woman claims haunted doll knocks and moves items at her home. A woman has blamed a doll for a sudden surge in paranormal activity in her home. Events manager Yvonne Hydes, who works for the Scottish Ghost Company and organizes paranormal investigations across across the country, took the doll home and placed it in her spare room. But mm -hmm. shortly after, she claims to have heard loud knocking, footsteps, and objects moving around without explanation. What? She received the doll during an investigation at Easter House's Proven Hall when one of the attendees gifted it to her. Was that Proven Hall? Proven Hall? Proven. P-R-O-V-A-N. Oh, okay. yeah, Proven Hall. The most terrifying aspect of the paranormal activity happened while they were carrying out an investigation in a park where Yvonne is adamant she saw the doll blink. Yvonne, who is from Paisley in Glasgow, said one of the member's friends had brought the doll to him after being on holiday. holiday. I gotta be honest. I thought for sure you were gonna come swinging with a Scottish brogue and you just... Oh my god, I, can, I do not do accents. If that's why I'm here, you need to get rid of me because no, absolutely not. Uh, done and done. Alright, Greg. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, after being on holiday in the north of england yeah. they bought it from a charity shop a uh, a lot of people hand in things like that to us most of the dolls i do have are all hand-me-downs so they don't bother me at all oh. but that night in proven hall as i was sat in the base room and she made me feel uncomfortable david who works as a medium absolutely hates her i brought it home and he said i should keep it in the garage and that made me feel uneasy I brought her into the house and she sat in the spare room. Uh -huh. A couple of days after bringing the inanimate object home, the family heard a loud knocking coming from the door and later move and later from above. Uh -oh, yeah. The, do uh, the dog took a what? dislike to the doll and some Words is hard, Tressa. I know, so hard. <laughs> and some electrical items became faulty. Yvonne explained, Everything was fine for a few days, but then I started to notice some knocking. My family and I heard a really loud knock to the point we jumped up and the dog was going mental, but no one was at the door. We checked the ring doorbell and no one was there. What? My, my husband doesn't believe in anything paranormal, but even he heard it. The knocking continued, but it started to come from above and it continued for a few days before stopping. I also heard footsteps of something walking across my landing. Suddenly, my cocker spaniel took a dislike to the doll being in the room. It started barking at the doll and shaking. When I spoke to people about her, I was whispering as if she could hear me. One day, I came down the stairs and saw one of my really heavy lamps sitting in the middle of the living room. Oh, wow, she fat shipping a lamp? That's wild. Wow. Right? Yeah. My son came in and I asked if he had been but if he had been up, but he hadn't. What? More objects what? were being moved each morning and Great. we electrical things started to happen. We have an electrical Hoover that is programmed to come out 10.30 p.m. each night. I was turning off the lights one morning and it shot out and did its own thing. I looked on the website and it hadn't been registered as being active at that time. 
Wow. Uber just sucking all by itself. I right? Wow. <laughs> After a few nights of the unexplained activity which had occurred since the arrival of the doll, fondly named Agnes, Yvonne's friend David, who also works as a medium, decided to take the toy to his house. She said, David took her home reluctantly and sat her on the seat beside his piano. Mm. Better than next to his organ. I mean, same day. Wow. Am I wrong? Isn't that crazy, you guys? Hey, that dude, is. don't you have a story about a doll? You are so natural. It's like you were made <laughs> for this job. Thank I, you. Uh, I am. I've been Here's doing a lot thing, of work Dave. lately, and mm. I've been going places, doing things. I've been on the Jason show here in Minnesota. It's shown in like six, seven different states. And Jason has me in in October to go over ghosty, weird things. And um, I brought in some haunted dolls. And I was telling the stories and then we get to the commercial break and Jason says to me, Hey, would you mind if we sent one of these dolls home with our camera guy and made him keep her for overnight? And I'm like, that's totally cool. He could have all five dolls. And they came back from break and we actually caught this on film. I'm pretty psyched about it. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and show this now. Okay. Let's get to it. Let's get to it. Forget the music. Cut it, Leo. Okay. Uh, Dave Schrader, uh, a couple segments ago, said, hey, Eric will be able, photographer Eric can take the haunted dolls home. When I said that on the show, we're going to roll it. Watch the blonde doll, okay? He turns to look at me when I make that announcement. Look at this. This is no joke to take one of these dolls home in the overnight or two. Whoa! Did you just see that? What happened? Little Miss No Name just turned to you as you said that. <laughs> It did. Did you watch it on film? Yeah. Well, that's the one going home. <laughs> okay. Okay. Again, watch the blonde one. And Dave did not move, right, Dave? Dave, we were no. still on the couch. We weren't going like this. Look at this again. This is no joke to take one of these dolls home in the overnight or two. Whoa. Did you just see that? What happened? Little Miss No Name just turned to you as you said that. <laughs> it did. Did you watch it on film? Yeah. Well, that's the one going home. <laughs> Yeah, and also my arm, because I saw my arm, my arm was out here with Dave. It wasn't by the dolls, FYI. Well, nice knowing you. <laughs> nice knowing me, nice knowing photographer Eric. Uh, now you don't have to buy him nuggets ever again. We'll never have to buy him food ever again. <laughs> That's Friday. You'll see the results of that. Right now, go out there and be yourself, because nobody can tell you. So, he took the dolls home set them up around his bed. He had to sleep in the basement. His family was not happy that he brought these <laughs> dolls home. And then he like goes for the full on spook factor. He puts all the dolls around the bed and puts candles in front of them all. And then he films them. And in the morning, he wakes up to the sound of his wife yelling and he goes upstairs. All of the cabinets and drawers in the kitchen are open. No. Yeah. So I was slated to go back in yesterday to pick the dolls up and hear about the aftermath from the experience. And we have had horrible weather here in Minnesota the last few days. And I'm driving in. I get there safely. And as I take the turn and I'm coming in slowly into the parking area, all of a sudden my car just goes out of itself, just controls and slides right down into the median post. So about 10 minutes before showtime, my car ends up looking like oh, that. Oh, dude. Yeah. No and you can see how hard I hit. You can actually see the indentation of the pillar in the hood of my car. So I yeah. drove it over, parked it, being the consummate professional that I am. I went in, <laughs> did the show. I have no memory of what I said or did on the show. I was so out of my head because of the car accident. And they give me back the bag of dolls. I go into the green room. I set it down. I put on my coat. My insurance company calls. I leave. I have to drive that car to the shop, whatever. Long story short, I left the bag of dolls. At the <laughs> and I just realized it at last night. I text the, the producer. I'm like, hey, I think I left the dolls there. He's like, yeah, we thought maybe you were doing that as a joke. I'm like, no, man, I was so scrambled from that car accident. And he goes, yeah, things got weird. So today on the show, Jason was talking about the fact that I had left the bag of dolls and he didn't know about it yet, but his phone kept playing music by itself backstage and just kept going what? off. What? He blames me and my cadre of haunted dolls for this weird 
moment in time. Those are demons. Look at that. Crushed up the darkness mobile. Oh, thank you, Ben. Cool, Tressa. Welcome as the newest host on Chachi. <laughs> Wait, what? Not, it is, did you it put is, that up, Dave? Paranormal 6, I did not. Oh, that's a nice idea. You. Yeah, you're the only other one with that ability, a schmo. Yeah, right. So All you're right. not going to go get those dolls, right? You're going to leave uh, those, right? Uh, I'm considering just leaving them there to rot now. But yeah. to, no, I'm going to go get them. I've got to bring them home. Before we go any further, we have to take just a quick break. And then we've got a brand new movie review, Five Nights at Freddy's. That's next right here on the Paranormal 60. Hey, this is the last time you're going to hear about it this year. The ninth annual New Jersey Para Unity Expo is taking place this weekend at the Woodbridge, New Jersey High School. It is an awesome location. This is the third year I've gone, the ninth year they've done it. We pack this school. There are going to be a, a, an amazing assortment of speakers. Um, you've got Steve and Dave, Sherry and Jason from Ghost Hunters. The three Ghost Brothers are going to be on site. Adam Barry, Chip Coffee. You've got the Destination Now Project Fear Kids. You've got John Zaffis. I'll be there. So many other wonderful speakers. It's an amazing weekend filled with lots of cool paranormal talks and opportunities to meet and greet with all of us. There's VIP parties and more. You can get information at New Jersey Para Unity expo.com hey maybe you're looking for answers and you just don't know where to go you want a little bit of counseling from the other side well why not reach out to winnie schrader with love and lotus tarot she might have the answers you're seeking give her a call reach out through the scan me code that's on the screen right now or just go to paranormal60.com that's paranormal60.com. Click on the Love and Lotus tab and book your reading now. You'll be thankful that you did. All right, we're back. And now it's time to do a little thing that I like to call. Let's see if I can find it because I'm old and have to look on my, oh, my readers now. Okay, here, here we go. This is a little segment of the show I like to call. It's time now for Upon Further Review. Hmm. All right. So joining us here, my boy, Charlie, got to go see the sneak preview of the brand new movie, Five Nights at Freddy's. Uh, the kids in my house are Five Nights at Freddy's fanatics. I don't know, because Chachi and, and Greg, you're old. Maybe you're not familiar with this. Are you guys familiar with the Five Nights at Freddy's? I, yeah, I'm familiar. We we had it on virtual reality. Kid. Well, you, you weren't really taught mm -hmm. Chachi or Greg. Though. Yeah. Wow. So... I like that you're assertive. That's good. Uh, I didn't even see either one of their lips move when you answered either. That was if Tress really is talking. Amazing. I'm not talking. She I don't blame you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Let's take a quick look at the trailer, and then we're going to throw to Charlie. Where to? Why do I always get the weirdos? at freddy's is out in theaters right now you can also stream it on the peacock network i gotta tell you i was excited about this movie for one reason and one reason only one of my very first jobs was working at showbiz pizza and that is yes. exactly what these characters are based on i can tell you i was there i got to work when it was first showbiz and then Chuck E. cheese bought it out and then i was the only guy tall enough to fit in the rat costume so i have many fond memories of my time there but those animatronics did freak me out i'm not kidding when we were closing down at night there were times you'd be in there sweeping all the garbage up in that room and all of a sudden one of the bears would move nope and oh that'd be the end or you'd hear the mm -mm. of the music <laughs> and there but yeah it was not a place you wanted to be late at night so i totally get and uh, where this is coming from. And Billy Bob and the Rock of Fire Explosion. Yeah, that's how big a nerd I am. Yes. I still remember them. Uh, I was psyched about this. And then all of a sudden, my kids start talking about Five Nights at Freddy's. And I'm thinking it's a new Freddy Krueger thing a few years ago. Turns out it's not. So Charlie, my boy here, is is to uh, talk to us a little bit about this. Charlie, was it a video game that then became a book series? Was it a book series that became a video game? What do we know about Five Nights at Freddy's? What was it? Um, so it started as a video game, okay. which I believe, if I remember right, came out in about 2014 or so, mm. which years ago. which g gained lots of popularity around its first couple years of, you know, being a game, right. which then created new stories into becoming books, which then followed the lore of the original games. And then it wasn't until, let's see, 
it, they actually started, they wanted to make a movie mm -hmm. way, probably let's say 2015, 2016, which um, it just kept getting scrapped with scripts, couldn't really find a hold on grasp of what they wanted to make into a movie. Right. But it wasn't until probably a couple years ago when they finally got the script, they got the cast and here's the movie. And then you've got Blumhouse Productions behind this movie. And uh, they're, of course, the ones behind The Conjuring, the new uh, kickoff of The Exorcist movies, the new Michael Myers Halloween movies. So they've got a penchant for bringing horror back and finding an interesting way to tell the story. So being a fan of both the video games and the books, Charlie, what did you think of Five Nights at Freddy's finally realized on the big screen? You know, it actually kind of shocked me that um, I kind of saw it as a new spinoff of the books and game. The way I saw it going into, I had a huge prediction that it was going to be more lore accurate to the video game. Mm -hmm. And then watching the movie, it's actually a whole new kind of just creation of both book references and game references with its whole new vision. Hmm. And actually, I think it has more book references. So if you're into reading, I definitely think that reading probably hey. our i'm out of that yeah. don't worry about it. i know i know some, some people out there I know that's true. none of these people i'm looking at know anything about reading trust me i that will that's probably one of the few things i'd read if there's pictures in it it's... <laughs> <laughs> so uh the movie I, I i was expecting honestly because that game system is really creepy i've watched you guys play it from time to time and it's really kind of uh, immersive and freaky were you disappointed by the lack of gore or did you think that they handled the story nicely enough so that they could appeal to a broader audience? You know, they definitely took firsthand on having a broader audience because the movie is PG 13, which I definitely oh. think kind of limits their possibilities of maintaining that lore accuracy, which being PG 13, you can't have any on screen killings or anything. So everything's kind of have to be put off to the side or yeah. <laughs> Put yeah. off to the side I'm or, you know, there, in the shadow, in a reflection. You can't have any on-screen blood or killing. What? I Which know. I feel like really, really landlocks what it could have been. Which, by the looks of it, I do not believe that there will be any sort of R-rated cut, which was rumored uh -oh. when the movie was in production. Which mm. I can't guarantee that there isn't one or if there will be one, but... I, it's looking like there isn't, which is kind of disappointing. Well, you, you do have to understand, folks. Um that want that kind of violence and we're used to it. You know, usually we're used to the people getting killed that need to be killed, right? <laughs> Whores, pot smokers, and people of- hey, Sex hey, workers, hey. sex Those workers. Those are all the workers. people that need slow to- it, Slow it, slow it. But what? I'm just saying oh, that's the way man. they happen in the movies. However, mm -hmm. most of the people attacked in the Five Nights at Freddy's are children. So I think that mm, teenagers, that that's close. I think enough. we're okay with that. And it's they were all like old. 10 to 12 years old. Even younger. Right. right. But in the game, you're like an employee. So. Right. But I think because it's based on the lore of these murdered children who are now ghosts inhabiting these machines. Spoiler alert. Look. It is a good, good deal. Let me see. What do you think? Okay. So, you know, mm. one being it's a sucky movie or five phantoms, meaning it is an amazing movie. Where do you put five nights at Freddy's? I'd say for how shocking I was of how they created it into something new, I'd give it a four. Oh. Four. Not I bad. Also, I sat down and watched it the other day with our other boy, Max. It was his fifth time of watching it because <laughs> it's parenting. He's probably on six or seven by now. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I don't have problems. You have problems. You worry about your own parenting. So it's good. Well, thank you, Charlie. Let's hear it for Charlie. Thank you. Well done, young man. You have a career in this someday now. Now we know who the true heir to the throne will be. Me. Yes. I'm a paranormal detective, but okay. I'll be here cool. soon. Oh, man. Jeez, that's dark, dark, what did dark, he say? dark. He said, I'll be here taking over soon. Oh, yeah. Jeez. Oh, I see that. All right. Well, let me see. Tressa, just so you mm -hmm. get a vibe for the show, I don't know if you've ever watched it. Yeah, why would I? Yeah, exactly. Um, we are now officially 41 minutes and 37 seconds in, and we are about to go to story number three for the news. Chachi, you have the con, sir. And how many stories are there tonight? 27? Yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yeah, not so much. Not what so much? Mean? Okay. No. no. Come on, well, push listen, I just want to bring us back. Uh, everybody get it. your drinks ready, though. I've, I feel bad that I've been knocking mine out during the show. Because I've read this news story and I don't know how 
Chachi's going to get through this without us drinking oh, everything why? in our house. So it's just thank reading, you for that, Dave. It's okay. just think reading. Back Listen to the origin story of this show. Yeah, this was really made to be a drinking show where we read a few stories. <laughs> That's and true. Somehow it's become a, a show about stories, then we do a little bit of drinking. That's true. And so I really want to change that tonight. Okay. Oh, thank you. Okay. I need and so them. normally I'll, I'll print out my stories. I'll study them for two or three days. I'll make a bunch of corrections to the verbiage I don't like. I'll, I'll, I'll make some notes about what? things that Dave gave You me. can do that? I, I can because I'm oh. second in command, Tressa. Yeah. No, I think I am, but okay, go ahead. And so tonight, though, Dave, mm -hmm. as you can see, I'm in quite the hostel. Yes. And so I didn't have the opportunity to print up my stories. So I'm going to read these stories, as they say in the business, Dave, raw, okay, without any edits. So all of you grab your glass. See, I already screwed up. I said garage. <laughs> grab grab the thing closest to you and listen. Um, Dave, okay. throw up the ground. First, of all, first of all, please do not applaud the fact that we've already got a snort out of Tressa. I don't know why <laughs> we're even here. Well what? Done. What? All right. That's beautiful. Enjoy yeah. the snort. Come on. Enjoy sure. the snort. Thank you, Kim. She sees the true power dynamic. The, the, the Tressa doesn't know about our, our shirts. Hold on. Hashtag enjoy no. the snort. <laughs> yes. I'm writing that down. I like it. That, that's the leader and right thank now. Thank you to Adult Tale. Five Nights at Freddy's so scary. Like boo wah ha 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 Throwing a little $5 action our way. Thank you so much. You read that Tale. well. Thank yeah. You. Let's see how okay. well you can read now. Let's get going. I, listen. Come on. Two long dead sea creatures. Mm -hmm. emerge from grandma's garden. Wow. You uh, ready? Hmm. About okay. Grandma in Texas mm -hmm. made a very odd discovery by taking a walk through her garden. Uh -huh. Ms. Amy Roberts was overwhelmed to find two, not one, two prehistoric fossils in her backyard in Lamar County. Was it the Colonel and Greg? Ah! Uh, uh, great jokes later in the story. Dave, hold those. Time out. Hold them. Right, sorry. One of the animals' remains was of a creature <laughs> similar to the Loch Ness monster. A creature. Yeah, a creature. It was a darker color than the rest of the ground and was slightly sunken. The next year, it was becoming more defined, and by 2023, there was no mistaking that it was a vertebrae. Ms. Roberts said of the discovery. When bones began to emerge from the surface, she knew the find would be significant. I was very excited to see the bones start to come out, and then I became a little overwhelmed at looking at the bones, knowing that I wouldn't possibly extract something like that on my own. So what did she do? She got in touch with the Texas Through Time Fossil Museum. And they came and they surveyed the scene. Their search unearthed not one but two fossils. And their research suggests that creatures died while fighting each other. Yes. This, this, folks, could be if the experts' opinions are confirmed. Experts, you say. <laughs> yeah, experts' opinions. Start drinking, folks. Not even halfway there. Uh-huh, uh-huh. The first discovery of its kind, Dave. We found the complete skeletons of a Tylosaurus, wow. a type of Mosasaur, and the mm -hmm. other was a Plesiosaur, a short-necked Plesiosaur, no less, which was a marine reptile similar, as many of you know, in appearance to the fabled Loch Ness Monster. The Tylosaurus was a predatory marine reptile, much like a giant predatory lizard with fins, Dave. Gotcha. The Tylosaurus, which was a mosasaur, resembles the sea creature featured in 2015's famed movie, Jurassic Park. The dinosaur was a predator and lived in the western <laughs> interior seaway. <laughs> I like that Hailey oh. Hailey says, I speak Chachanese sometimes. Chachanese. I wrote that down too. That, that's yeah. competing. Okay. Got that. Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> words is hard. Yes, Radiometric dating. 
Dave, you know how that works, right? I do, yeah. Okay. It yeah. estimates that their age was, get this, huh? about the time Greg was born 72 <laughs> million years ago. Good and despite God. that, what some may call ancient status, huh. the fossils are remarkably well-preserved, much like our purple-headed friend. Barney? Correct. Yes. The remains will now go through a thorough process of scientific preparation and testing before huh. making their new home at the Texas Through Time Museum. The examination of the Mosiosaur skull is mm -hmm. already near completion. And Ms. Roberts from Lamar County, Texas, was mm -hmm. delighted to have played her role in the discovery of the ancient species. As she should be. When I got a chance to interview her, she said, I am thrilled with the finding of these creatures and the new friendships we've made with Andre, his family, and his team. Now, what I don't understand is who is Andre, but we'll get back to that in another story. Okay. I can't wait to see these wonderful fossils displayed at the museum and to show my granddaughter what I found. Hmm. Amen, Miss Roberts. <laughs> Amazing. That is pretty cool. I wonder now, I wonder if they suckered her into, oh, do you want to donate these to the museum? Because I think like intact, full uh -huh. scale worth bone nothing. And junk. I can't think of the word fossils. Yeah, they're worth <laughs> like a lot of dough. Oh, are they? I don't mm, that Did like Nick wrong. Cage pay like millions for one years ago? Yeah, he was trying to buy the elephant man though. That's <laughs> um yeah. What was the a, uh, it was a man. Yeah, with, uh, <laughs> that's it. Bad plaque and tartar buildup on his teeth. Yeah. I believe. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, you know, uh, so uh, all right, that's that pretty was, cool that was though. Pretty rivetly, riveting. Yeah. yeah, it was rivetly. It was definitely <laughs> rivetly. Yeah. <laughs> it was Way to put him down. Way to come out swinging. I looked, Greg. I looked over at myself while I was listening to that story. I'm like this. <laughs> it was interesting. I like it. I like the fact that we're still uncovering this. And isn't it cool? Yeah, sobriety is not a virtue. Yeah, right, I do think right. it's pretty interesting that they figured out that these two guys are dead because they were battling one another and just both collapsed to the ground like the end of Rocky. And uh, there you have it. <laughs> no clear winner. Yeah. Mm. All right. Uh, let's see who. Oh, you know what? It's exciting. Ladies and gentlemen, G Law is up with a story next. Whoa, whoa, whoa. All right. Okay. Yeah, um, get with it, buddy. Yeah. Focus. All right. So, Focus. Uh, eyes on the prize, buddy. So, uh, I'm going to follow up Tressa and Chachi and read yeah. this. Um, what is this? Uh, New like, story. Uh, I'll try yeah, to help you. PBS. <laughs> I feel like I'm on oh, PBS. Like or, PBS. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Goldie Hawn <laughs> revealed uh -huh. alien encounter. Not Goldie Hawn reveals alien encounter. Mm -hmm. Not Chachi offline. No, he's Hawn out. Absolutely not. Oh, I like it. Mm -hmm. Goldie Hawn opened up about her long held belief in extraterrestrial beings, saying that they visited her after she called out to them when she was 20 years old. There she is. Look at them. They're like uh, communicating there. Um, that was a time when, you know, there was a lot of UFO sightings, Han said about her time working as a dancer in California in her early 20s. Huh. I remember it so clearly, she said. I went outside my door and I sat on a little ledge and I looked up at the dark sky. I saw all these stars and all I could think was, how far does it go? How little are we? Are we the only planet in the whole wide universe? that has life on it. You know, those things that we all think about when we look at the dark, dark sky. The actress then called out to any aliens that might be listening. I know you're out there. I know we're not alone. Would like to meet you one day. And that's what she did when she was 20 years old, shouting at the, at the sky. Uh, four months later, Han was working in a dance job in West Covino, what, what, Covina? Oh, yeah. West Covina, California, when she was asked to take a nap in a friend's car. That's odd. Mm. As she settled down, she said, I got this high pitched sound in my ear. While hearing the high pitched frequency, Han claimed to see three triangular shaped heads. They were silver in color, slashed for a mouth, tiny little nose, and no ears. They were pointing at me pointing at me in the car as if they were discussing me like I was a subject. 
and they were droning. She added and described that she was Can unable to story? move. Huh? Huh? Go on. Correct she was word. unable to move uh -huh. uh, until this episode was over and she burst out of it. Huh. Getting emotional, Han spoke about the aliens. She said, they touched me. I felt the finger of God. It was benevolent, loving feeling. This was powerful. I was filled with light. Han would later go on and study crop circles and dreamed about seeing aliens again the night before a mysterious circle appeared near where she was staying. We got to the spot and by God, I was standing on this hill looking down over the valley that was dark. That was exactly the spot in my dream, she said. Whether or not these experiences were genuine, Han has remained captivated by the concept of aliens and was proud of her curiosity. We can never lose our wonder, Han said. It's just so fun. I really... <laughs> Uh, I really am. It, it, it's really an important aspect of oh. being an adventurer, and nothing is impossible. What? Back to nothing. You, no, sorry, we were a whole other page. Up, that story. Wait, there's Apologies. another page, Greg. There's another page. Uh, okay. Oh God! All right. Yeah. Uh, let's see. All right. You sure, you want me to do this? Uh, yeah, because it's only a paragraph and a half, and this is an important part of the story. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. Han and her longtime partner, Kurt Russell, are no stranger to speaking about their alleged alien encounters. Russell told the BBC that one report headline making, making a alleged UFO lights over a Phoenix, is what he said. He said he was flying with his son, Oliver, to go see his girlfriend, and they were on approach. He said the 27, uh, 2017 interview... I saw six lights over the airport in absolute uniform V shape. Oliver said to me, Pa, what are those lights? Russell continued. Then I kind of came out of my reverie and I said, I don't know what they are. He said, oh, are we okay? And I said, yeah, I'm going to call it in. So he reported it. There you go. Yeah. He was Makes the sense first. He was the first civilian pilot to call in the Phoenix lights. Mm. Yeah, you know, I love that story. Yeah. It's so good. Do you? Well, when read yes. by somebody that can read. Yeah, it's a great story. Good story. Good. That's the first time I ever read that story. That was exciting. Oh, it's hard to tell. <laughs> um, Tim, I uh, apologize. I what? know that I went away for a moment. Yeah. For you. I had... uh, it's okay. It was re just really uncomfortable, the whole thing. I don't need to know that you had that. Let's just get to it. Tressa, your second story. Uh, Tressa, uh, yeah. hey, Tressa. Now, the, the upside, Tressa, uh -huh. is you know, see what you're up against. So pretty much. Uh, all yeah. right. Hey, yeah, you guys yeah. want to hear about another celebrity that had a weird story? I'll tell you right now. Oh, yeah. Bring it on. Cool. Thanks. Uh, Kristen Stewart says she had a paranormal incident with a colonial ghost. The actress revealed that when she was around 15 years old, she filmed a movie about ghosts in Regina, Canada, 2007's The Messengers. Stewart was staying in a very old hotel with her mother while filming and described a night when she was in bed. And all of a sudden, I felt like my legs had been pushed kind of down because they were up like my knees were up. The Twilight Star yeah, noted, okay. The Twilight Star noted that she was genuinely not sleeping during the encounter, saying, "I wasn't even laying fully down. Then all of a sudden, I was strained out." Kristen then said, "The presence made me open my eyes, and when I opened my eyes, it was a lady in colonial garb. There was a lady in old school clothes with darkened features and rollers in her hair and sort of looming over my bed as high as the top of the drapery, she shared, adding that she couldn't make a sound for a very long time. You could not freaking convince me that I did not see a ghost, Stuart concluded. Was that a good Kristen Stewart? Because I've Stuart, been working on Kristen that all day. Stewart is great Thank out you. there. It's so hot, we need a little. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Good God. Yeah. You couldn't freak, freaking convince her it wasn't a ghost, huh? Nope. Uh, it I was. Can, you I did well. Wanna, Two stories in. Can she read all the stories? And I, I just want to sit and listen because. I don't want to do that, but thank you. Greg. 
Greg, we had we had oh. this meeting before the show about <laughs> harassment and the way we say and do things. Please. <laughs> Pick up the brand new book by Greg Lawson, <laughs> Messages from Mothman. It's out and available now. There's a link for Greg, his website, and his books on today's program guide. Mm. All right, Chachi, with a mouthful of food, you have the last two stories of the night. I'm so glad Dave, you I'm not prepared. Eating. Yeah. He's eating yeah. his dinner, Dave. Yeah. Oh, my I know. gosh. Why wait till the show's over? I have chocolate over. chip cookies for dinner. It's delicious, Tressa. <laughs> I know. You said so I earlier. I did. Mm, maybe yeah. I don't I feel know. like we're missing. We're missing an adult. We're, we're missing a responsible adult. That's what we're missing. Mm. Oh yeah, wash those cookies down with some more Christmas box Excuse beer. Me. Okay. Oh, nice. All right. Ready? Mm. Was Let's that your go. shirt? <laughs> listen, Dave. Listen. Yeah. What is my favorite thing other than the paranormal? Trust me. Bourbon. Want to guess? Oh. Uh, is it bourbon? That was a good guess. Thank you. She's right, actually. All right, what's my third favorite thing after the Scotch. paranormal and bourbon? Scotch. Uh, All right, what is my fourth uh, favorite thing after the escalators. paranormal and bourbon? Escalators. Is it what? escalators? We, we could do this all night. All right, I'm just going to jump right in. <laughs> is it rock and roll paranormal stories? Rocket, when your buddy knows you, right? That's a hashtag <laughs> romance. Thanks, Dave. Yeah, you got it. I've got not one, but two back-to-back -back stories. Oh, Dave, two, <gasps> two, two. Oh. All right, let's go. Oh, it's going to be about one. music? Mm -hmm. My first oh. one, Tressa, you're going to like this. Am I? Yep. You sure? This this is your doppelganger. Mm, I, I like the way that sounds. I have a story Britney Especially in that picture. <laughs> yeah. I mean, thank you. Oh. Okay, here we go. Uh, Britney Spears. <laughs> God damn it. Oh, my goodness. Uh, mm. Come on, Britney Spears. What? <laughs> come on, Seven man. minutes into the story, we've only heard the words Britney <laughs> Spears. That's all you need to hear. That's She's going to recall an eerie paranormal experience that she had. Okay. She oh, was man. on a road trip through Arizona with a friend who was also nursing a broken heart. Now, granted, oh. this was 2002, but they together had a very eerie experience. In her hit memoir. That is not the wow. Britney of today. The woman in me, Britney recalled, we felt it at the moment because we needed it. We were so spiritually open and so raw. It showed us there was more than just what we could see. The pair were letting off steam with their hair blowing through the wind in her convertible car. <laughs> <laughs> Why did I know he was going to put that out? This is not fair. You got to do this earlier in the show. You know, put that fire out, man. <laughs> Gotta put that fire out. Yeah, that's gonna extinguish the fire. When suddenly Brittany felt an eerie feeling settling over her, she added how it was a profound beauty, quite otherworldly and downright humbling. The lucky singer, and when I say lucky, that's the name of her song, contemplated asking her friend if she believed in aliens. However, she stayed quiet and sat there with the feeling for a long moment. Brittany thought it was only her that experienced it. Until her pal asked, do you feel that? Do you know what that is? Yeah. <laughs> I knew it. I freaking knew it. I knew it. <laughs> I'll tell you what. If uh, you are not the gift watching this. It's just one of the best. All right. Um, <laughs> she added, we felt it at the moment because we needed it. <laughs> Don't put it up there. <laughs> We were so spiritually open and so raw. It showed us there was more than just <laughs> what we could see. Just me. Not is. just me. A 41-year-old pop idol previously described her car as her spaceship. Mm, and that's okay. where she goes to that's be That's normal. Spiritual. Yeah. <laughs> what, no gif? What? Where's no. the Popeye gif? What? Spiritual? <laughs> He will just run Popeye gifts and then Uranus stories for an hour. We don't need that right now. If I could, I would. Oh, my God. Ugh. Talk amongst yourselves. I have to clear my throat. All right. Well, I'll tell you what we'll do. Since let's, you've got two yeah. rock and roll back-to-back -back stories, let's there break it up with... It's time now for Paratunes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dave. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, we have a brand new Paratunes. Greg, introduce this for us, if you would. 
Man, this is great. Um, I was talking to Blind Dog uh, about doing some stuff out in West Texas. We were actually looking for a missing girl and um, told him a little bit about the story. He actually had some background on the story. Um, we ended up doing a big dig and we destroyed somebody's backyard uh, looking for this, this girl and couldn't find her. Um, the idea is still out there and we're still trying to figure it out. But he ended up writing this song, man. And um, I love that guy. What's the name of the song? Killing in a Small Town. And it's by? Blind Dog. The best. Our killing in a small town Never goes away Their souls still hang around them Something more to say The voices of the missing The voices of the few They try to tear it all down and Speak to me and you God help them if they're out there in Some dark and endless night Maybe they just got lost somewhere On the way up to the light They're Killing a small town it's never really gone On with you when you're sleeping but still the town goes on But the ones they love all around them With the ones that turned and did them wrong The test of blood is in the water A killing in a small town Goes on and on and on and on and on. There are voices on the radio, voices in the air. Sometimes you just fall silent with the rumors everywhere. Some come here to listen And bring some justice to their name Then a few are seeking food And they treat it like a game With the ones they love all around them They walk the streets with the ones who did them wrong The taste of blood is in the water or killing in a small town It goes on and on and on and on and on Everybody's got a story And some of them are lies But they blend into your memory Truth is hard to find But when you think about it Man, it chills you to the bone Or killing a small town Oh, it's never really gone They walk down to the coffee shop Roam through empty halls You hear their footsteps in the evening And they cry in the walls Because a killing in a small town it's never really gone The taste of blood still in the water And it goes on and on and on and on and on and on and on It goes on and on and on and on and on Beautiful. What a haunting melody. Great song. Very good. Mark even kicks in with a little great song. Sad it had to be made, though, you know, but excellent tune. Great stuff. Uh, Donna C weighs in and says, makes me think of the DeFeo murders in Amityville. Oh, Ooh, yeah. yeah. 
Wow, from Paranormal Pixie. That about sums it up. All right, we gave you a little time. Have a good night, everybody. What? No, no, no. You still have more stories to read. Really? Yeah, get to it, or I'm sending these guys after you. (laughs) Showbiz pizza, baby. (laughs) All right, listen. Uh You ready, Tressa? Yeah, I am. Go. Darius Rucker. Ah, Recalls being. That's a very young Darius Rucker. That's a good man. He, he recalls being visited by the ghost of what he says was his grandmother. Aww. College was a formative time for Darius Rucker, and not just because that's when Hootie and the Blowfish got its start. In a recent appearance on my favorite talk show, The Kelly Clarkson Show, Rucker shared that he came face-to-face with a ghost when he was a student at the University of South Carolina. Even though the spirit was that of a family member, the experience turned him into a lifelong believer in the paranormal. Rucker told Carlson that the encounter occurred shortly after he and bandmate Don Felber moved into an off-campus house, which they furnished with hand-me-down furniture. I had my grandmother's bed. My grandmother had just recently died, he recalled. And I wake up one night, 3 o'clock in the morning, I look at the edge of my bed, and there's my grandmother sitting there. I sit up. I wipe my eyes and I go, wow. And what happens? She's still sitting there. I get up and run out of my bed. I run to Dean's room and I was like, yo, Dean, my grandmother's ghost is in my room. Can I sleep in your bed? What? Oh, I knew. I I was reading. I was like, skip this line. Skip this line, Chachi. Nope. Absolutely not. Yep. And so what did Dean say? Hell no. Nope. (laughs) <laughs> he said, run no. into people's room like that. And so he went on the couch, he said. Did it scare you, Clarkson asked? It's kind of cool, he actually said. It's it's a little scary, but I believe that that stuff, that stuff that happens, I believe in it big time. Bigly, as some presidential <laughs> candidates may say. Mm. That brief run with the paranormal hasn't changed the Charleston native's view of the USC one bit. After all, Columbia was where his musical career began. And after all these years, his commitment to the Gamecocks. Mm. Go ahead. (laughs) I hope we're not paying for this every time it does, because all that money you're making is going out the window, Dave. Oh, it's public domain by now. It's fine. Oh, thank God. Mm. Um, We have an incredible (laughs) love for USC because we started there. We are that success story of the band that made it out of that university. Mm -hmm. It's where I cut my teeth. It's where we began all this. Anytime I go back there, I just feel like I'm going home. But however, Mm -hmm. sometimes going home involves a ghost. This encounter is what inspired the band's original name. Now, Dave, you know I like rock and roll trivia more than anybody. Mm -hmm. And this I did not know. Mm -hmm. The original name of the band was Boo Tie and the Ho Fish. Ooh, I, I do not care for that. Up. Boo Tie and the Home Fish. No, thank ho you. Fish. Not Home Fish. Ho fish. Mm-hmm. Maybe Booty, like Hootie. Are you sure fish. it's Boo Tie? Maybe it's Booty <laughs> and the Home, and the home Fish. fish. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll finish that story for you. But his agent thought that might not land the way he expected. Mm, he nope. suggested maybe flicking, flicking, flicking a few letters or. I will maybe not say Wait, it like how that. It? How did he maybe. do it? Touch? He flicked them. <laughs> <laughs> Which seemed to work well because, the, no, no, you got to really move oh. it, Tressa. Like. <laughs> You're doing Tressa's it. being all gentle with it. I'm, I'm, turn, I'm tuning You're in a radio. Be, I don't know what you guys are talking about. Is Greg yeah, leading a band? Right. What was going on there? So, uh, yeah. So the name of the band, Hootie and the Blowfish. I want you to know I might have written that whole last paragraph. (laughs) You're kidding. (laughs) About you really? I and the whole fish. Come on. (laughs) I didn't think you'd fall for that. I'm so disappointed. Uh, I mean, it all makes sense. It's a home fish. It's not a home fish. fish. None of it's great. It's fine. No. All right. So I have one story to share with you guys tonight. Thank God. Thank you, Dave. Yeah, thanks. Oh, I, know, I, know, I love you, people. And uh, I think you people deserve better than what you've heard tonight. So I've got oh, a couple thanks. stories. That's to share. so sweet. 
Yeah, I like you know I'm, I don't know if you're familiar with my job on the show, but I, I try uh-uh. to bring the mercy mm-hmm. kill. That's to, nice. Oh you know, yeah, when I can, I do what mm-hmm. I can. Yeah, um, this story is alarming on so many levels, Uh-oh. and I'm also whilst we're doing this, I'm I'm also opening up the uh, scare bag, the mailbag of the macabre so that we can read a couple of emails before we head out for this evening as well. So I'm, I'm multi, what you call multitasking. Pay attention, boy, when I'm talking to you. So here's the story we do have. A doctor declares an elderly man dead of natural causes. The mortician discovers a shocking error shortly after. Uh-oh. A shocking incident took place on Sunday in a Polish town Oh, they made it too simple, didn't they? Right. Yeah. A shocking incident took place on Sunday in a Polish town located about 87 miles south of Warsaw. When the daughter of the elderly citizen who lived alone in his apartment visited him in the afternoon, she Uh found her father lying on the bed wrapped in a blanket, no longer showing signs of life. She Mm. called police. As reported by the Polish newspaper Super Express, the man was very ill. A doctor who was also alerted stated that the 74-year-old had died due to natural causes. But the employees of a funeral home who arrived at the apartment a few minutes later uncovered something much more disturbing. They quickly realized that the doctor had made a mistake, for there was a knife in the deceased's chest, which was being covered by the blanket. (laughs) The police and prosecutor's office immediately began investigating... The case is a mystery to the investigators and raises many questions about the doctor specifically. According to the spokesperson for the police, it was initially ruled out that anybody contributed to the man's death. The question of how it was possible for the doctor who did an examination to declare the man dead did not notice that there was a knife stuck in the corpse's chest while still ruling it a death due to natural causes. But friends, hear me out on this. You guys Uh are intelligent. Kind of. I think it's a pretty fair assessment that if you have a knife in your chest, it's natural for you to die. So was he really that mm-hmm. far off? That's true. And you don't know what made? kind of birth defect this person has and has had the you whole thing. You born with a knife in their with chest? A knife in you don't chest? know? Fair. You don't Maybe know this person? swallowed a knife oh, during pregnancy. Mm-hmm. They mm-hmm. sat there mm-hmm. in his chest plate. I don't I don't know. I'm not, I, I don't know that I'm with you on this one. I... I mean, you don't know this person, so you can't say. Hmm. You're, well, I, you're right. Don't change your book by its cover. Is that what she's saying? Is that where yeah. it's going? All right. Kind of, I guess, whatever. Okay. I don't care. Okay, here's, uh, here's a couple of emails. Let me, let me get into these real quickly here. Hey there, Dave. A lot of emails, man. Yeah. A few <laughs> moons back, I stumbled upon your YouTube channel, and let me tell you, I've been hooked on your content ever since. With the eerie season upon us, I thought it's right to share a story that had me questioning the very fabric of reality. This tale pushed me to the realms of engineering and physics, where I've spent the last two decades unraveling the mysteries of the unknown. So brace yourself for this one. Back in the dark days of 1990, my mother was struck down by the insidious grip of spinal meningitis. She was confined to a sterile hospital room and the doctors held little hope for her survival. They called my father, my brother, and me to the hospital one fateful night, telling us it might be our last chance to see her. We said our farewells, fully believing that it would be the last time we'd ever see her. To truly understand the gravity of this tale, you need to know a little bit about my parents. My dad, he was a no-nonsense government agent, a man who only trusted what he could see and touch. My mother, on the other hand, was a devout Irish Catholic with a penchant for the supernatural. The kind who believed in sugar on windowsills and irons over the door. She had a keen analytical mind honed during her years in law enforcement. Now back to the story. That night after we left the hospital, something inexplicable happened. My mother claimed that she woke in her frigid room, the air feeling thick and oppressive. She sat up in her bed and saw a cloaked figure enter the room. The man had a strong Irish accent and sat down in the chair that my dad had occupied just hours before. He pulled back his hood, locked eyes with my mother, and took her hand. And in a voice that sounded as rusty as old hinges, he told her, You can't hide from me. He tilted his head slightly, grinned, and whispered, 
I'm not here for you, kiddo. I'm here for what's most precious to you. With a kiss on her hand, he vanished into air, chuckling as he went. I'll see you soon. <laughs> Incredibly, my mother defeated the virus the very next day and was released from the hospital within 24 hours. However, her return home marked the beginning of a series of bizarre occurrences. Mirrors, some dating back to the 1800s, crashed to the ground, heavy as lead, and I swear I saw a yellow orb during one of those incidents. Over the next eight months, strange phenomena became a regular part of our lives. Lights flickering, objects defying gravity, and my mother's gentle nature replaced by an uncharacteristic aggression. It wasn't until a decade had passed after my parents' separation that my mother finally confided in me about her hospital visitor. I tried to rationalize it, attributing the incident to medication and the virus's effect on her mind. Yet, the unexplained occurrences in our home, which persist to this very day, defy any rational explanation. It's these unfathomable events that drew me into this world of science and the quest to uncover the unknown and there's nothing more captivating than the pursuit of the answers when all seems shrouded in an enigma. And that comes to us from Adam Johnson. Thank you, Adam Johnson. Well really written. Good. That was an incredible story, man. Yeah, that was yeah, really good. What? Next time you should let me read it. Yeah. Hello, Dave and the Paranormal 60 News crew. Thank God. My name is May, and I'm 10 years old. I got to meet you at Phenomicon in Vernal, Utah. When you had your presentation, you mentioned the Paranormal 60. My family listened to it on our way home. A couple days ago, I was listening to an episode, and you talked about ghost pets. That got me thinking about my experiences with my own ghost pet. I had a kitten named Sprinkles that died about two years ago. I felt Sprinkles with me when she died. That night, I stopped crying, and something happened that made me feel comforted about her death. I saw a fuzzy image of a blob-like thing. It had the same colors as sprinkles, and it just felt like she was saying, I love you and I miss you. I told my mom and dad about this, and they just thought it was a dream of her coming to see me. Then one year later, I was in bed to fall asleep, waiting there, and I had little kitten feet walking on my feet. I got up wanting to pet one of my two cats, but nothing was there. Later on, I've been having more experiences and dreams. I had the most weird experience happen a few weeks ago. I was on my bed petting my two cats when I heard something scratch my cat tower in my room. I thought it was a third cat, but I was petting, and I looked at my other two cats instantly, and I knew it was Sprinkles with me at that moment. I really miss Sprinkles, and I hope to have more stuff happen to me. And Dave, is your cat mischievous or evil? May Baker. Well, May, I am responding to you on my podcast, as you requested. I have five cats, which says more about me than it does about cats. Yes, it but does. They're all mischievous and just a little evil, with the exception of Mr. Mittens, <laughs> who is simply just a delight, an angel in a furry coat. Thank you for writing in, May. As a 10-year-old, that is probably one of the best emails I've ever had in here. So yeah. well done, May, May. May, don't listen to your parents. That is your kitty coming to visit you. She yeah. loves you. They love you. But, ah, I love this. We always love to give good advice, like don't listen to your parents. Yes, <laughs> every time. Yeah, so just, if you can, sage. just ignore all of their sage advice. And yes. just, just come to us with your real questions mm -hmm. from now yep. on. Hi, Paranormal 60 News Crew. I have a ghost cat, and I wrote a blog about him that includes other supernatural instances. Oh, I'm sorry. This is one of those where I have to click a link and then go to the blog. I will do that, June, but I'll do it on another email because I have a feeling that's going to be a, a lengthier one, but I will do it. Here's one from Michelle Diaz. Hi, Dave. I just had to put my dog down when I came home. I went to lay down to sleep some of the pain away. Just a few minutes after I laid down, I felt the spirit of my dog and I felt her jump up and sit next to me. I actually saw the mattress depressed down and I could feel her cuddle in my arms and I knew she'd be okay. There have been many times when my dogs that have passed away have let me know that they're still around, but that one is still the most profound. And that comes from Michelle Diaz. Thank you, Michelle Diaz. Some good stories tonight, Dave. Yeah, yeah no more pets are... though. It's bumming me out. Oh, I'm sorry. You heard it, folks. Only happy ghost stories for now. <laughs> yeah, no deaths. Come on. If we could do ghosts that have no association to death. That'd be better. 
All right, Paranormal 60 News crew, I've got a story for you. You mentioned on the Paranormal 60 scary tales and emails that you love hearing stories of animals coming back. Well, sorry, Tressa. <laughs> well, I've got a story for you. Nearly two years in the making. We used to have three dogs and a cat, and they all grew up together. A yellow lab named Malibu, a boxer pity mix named Kai, and a newfie mix named Kenya. Or Kemya. Sorry, I can't hard to read with these glasses. I'm so old. And a little tabby cat named Muse. They all had very distinct personalities that caused chaos at times, but we love them. Back on October 15th of 2021, when she was 10 years old, we had to put Kemya down to advanced osteoscleroma. It was devastating. Kai took it incredibly hard and passed suddenly three days later on October 18th. The strange thing is, is that that day at work, after the first break, my lead and I were Going, uh, going on up to uh, clean the room, and suddenly this black chemia-sized mass came between us, and we both saw it. I told her what had happened, and then I left to cry for a bit. Much uh, Moved to lunch the same day, and I get a panicked call from my mom saying Kai had just died. I took the rest of the week off and just held on to Malibu, fearing she would leave too. She was 12 at the time, and I was so scared. I had a dream about Kai, and he said he would always be here with Kemya. Cue the meltdown. Since then, I couldn't bear to be away from my girl Malibu. I took her everywhere I could. Softball games, traveling, etc. It was going so well until June of this year. She had been diagnosed with some really long, horrible name that's medical and I won't butcher. And those last three months were the hardest. She would have good days and bad days, but after my sister and I got back from Phenomicon, she just got worse and worse. I ended up having to let her go on September 15th of 2023. I'm crying as I write this, but I'll do my best to keep a few errors as possible. We took her in first, so we didn't have to wait all day, and that was the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. When we went home, I laid down and cried myself to sleep, and she came to see me in my dream. She was running, barking, and just doing all the things that she couldn't do anymore. She said she was okay. She said she loved us and that she would still be here. But now she's with Kai, Kamya, and Muse. We hear and feel them still, but it has been the hardest thing, and some days I just don't want to do anything. My niece's dogs still look for her. My cousin's dogs still look, and my aunt's dogs still look, and it's heartbreaking. I'm trying to take it day by day, but most days are just me existing when I don't really want to. I take physical pain over this any day and it's exhausting trying to mask it, but I have to keep existing. I promised some people I would. Anyway, this is a really long story and I have to go to work in five hours. I really hope to meet you again someday and thank you for the hug. See you around. That comes from Jen. Well, Jen, let me say something to you. Animals are a gift to us, obviously. They are here to remind us of what love is really about just pure unadulterated love. So don't cut yourself off from that. I think your pets would want you to continue to share that love with other animals. So go and find some of these shelter animals that are in desperate need, maybe on their last step and need a home. And there are many places that have elderly animals who are spending their last years behind chain link fences or in little cages. And you might be that soul that they need to connect with. So consider doing that. And I know it may be hard, but I think you've got a great heart for this and a great soul. So please open yourself up to helping other animals in the honor of those that have come before. And thank you very much for opening up and sharing your story with us here on the Paranormal 60 News. Tressa, you made yeah. it through your very first official episode with us. Congratulations. Thank you. Greg, as you can see, is not as happy about it, but we yeah. are very, very happy that you're here. And I'm very uh, happy you're here, Tristan. Oh, yeah. thank you. Yeah. I will. Uh, we'll be back again next Monday. We've got uh, some more cool interviews lined up, and then next Wednesday with more paranormal news, strange hijinks, and if you have any interest in connecting with the people on the show, except Chachi, we have now added all the social medias, all the links for each one of us on the program guide, Chachi. Being kind of on the lamb from the man, he really likes to just go by Chachi and does not have any social media. He's probably the smartest of all of us because he is truly unplugged, except for these 
60 to 385 minutes of Wednesday mm-hmm. that we spend together. It's all the murders. It is all the murders. Hey, hey Dave. Yes. Is Greg going to be doing anything this weekend? <laughs> oh, that's it. That's it. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. Greg, Greg, have you got something going on this weekend as well, Greg? Oh, well, you know, Dave, uh, why don't you run that uh, clip again? A little, uh, that would be good. Yeah, uh-huh. perfect. Uh, Look at the way he's that. clinging to that hose. Go ahead. A lot of putting, a lot of putting out fires. Uh, we'll uh-huh. be in Jefferson at the History Haunts and Legends. Um, I, I believe uh, there will be a Nikki Folsom there as well. Really? Uh, and yeah, we'll be uh, we'll be speaking on uh, that kind of stuff. I bet Blind Dog will show up. He lives uh, very close to there, and I bet he's going to have a couple of more songs in the next couple of weeks. Excellent. We're getting very close to having enough for him to do his full Paranormal 60 Sessions album. We're expecting Absolutely. that to roll out, and as soon as it does, we'll let you know where you can get the downloads of that show. Before we say goodbye, here's one more important announcement. Innovation, creation, vitality, and joy are the pulse of MySoulTopia.com with many custom creations for the mind, body, and spirit, along with classes, intuitive sessions, coaching, and healing energies. MySoulTopia.com strives to bring sophistication with a twist to the metaphysical and the holistic market while raising the community's vibration and channeling the new paradigm which means new and exciting adventures for all. MySoulTopia.com is utopia for your soul. Visit MySoulTopia.com, your one-stop shop for all your metaphysical needs. Offering hand-selected crystals and crystal jewelry with prices to fit every budget. MySoulTopia.com offers the best selections of tarot and divination cards by top designers expertly curated and award-winning book collections from top authors on every subject you'll need on your spiritual journey. My Soultopia is also proud to offer the finest singing bowls and an eclectic collection of the most amazing gemstones, crystals, and crystal jewelry from the top metaphysical designers in the world. MySoulTopia.com is always your one-stop shop for award-winning mixes of Florida water, sage spray, and other spiritual protection. So begin your journey with the best resource, MySoulTopia.com. That's MySoulTopia.com. Why mess with the rest when you can start with the best? MySoulTopia.com. Again, that's M Y. S O U L T O P I A dot com. Thank you all for being a part of the show. Ben Turner dropping another 10 on us for the Chachi Drink Fund. And just for clarification, Greg, people can see you where and where can they get tickets? Uh, that's going to be Jefferson, Texas. You can get uh, tickets at the History Haunts and Legends. I believe they're on Facebook, uh, Jefferson, Texas this weekend. It's going to be pretty cool. All right. Well, now you know. I missed it. <laughs> Sorry, <I wasn't> <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys for being a part of the show. We'll be back next week. Have a great day. Yeah, yeah. Happy weekend from all of the Paranormal 60 News crew and our newest edition, Tressa. Thank you. Have a great night. Goodbye. <laughs>
Scotchy and the Colonel and the Paranormal. Detective always traders got me and they all won't be directed. He's got protective phrases and some crazy magic tricks. Even Scully cannot save him from the voice of Stevie Nicks. Traders on. Wednesday night, don't be alone. The paranormal 60s on. Now one day they might even put me on a show. There's a ghost in my mom's basement, man. I live down there, I know. It's Wednesday night, don't be alone. The paranormal 60s on. Schrader's on. Words is on. 